Look at Sale playing hurt. Look at Sale with a shot. We make the Sale recovers and excited. As uh, the Chargers defense forces a turnover, then Sale comes up against Adrian Morrell. Bing! Look at him go between tackles. Tommy, to make the play. Yeah, Sale has not been 100% for a few weeks now, but he does a good job of shedding people right here, sticking his head in, and bringing down Adrian Morrell. Nine tackles and a fumble recovery for Sale on this day to assist. But the Jets defense also keeping it close. Chargers tried to run it for a while with Natron means. He means business, but Jeff Lagerman means, I want the football. He strips it, and Donald Evans has it. Lowry field goal, 3 nothing Jets. Take that lead of the second quarter. Paul Fraze and Lagerman rush inside. It's Fraze sacking Humphreys, and Pete Carroll's defense figuring, well, now that we're out of it, maybe we can make a good run. Scary moment for the Jets in the second quarter. Boomer Esiason tries to duck, but Junior Say actually tried to not really lay the level. He does, though, and Esiason leaves. It's incomplete to Thornton, and Boomer hit hard, had to leave because of the concussion. Yeah, Esiason tried to hang in and hit the ball, and not a vicious lick by Junior Seau. I think probably the turf did more damage than the hit itself. Well, Boomer did not return. Stan Humphreys has been trying to find a grip on things with the Jets leading 6 nothing second. Here's Humphreys on a nice roll to Mark Say, and say what? The Chargers lead at 7-6 at the half. Jack Trudeau played the second half. It looked like Pierre Trudeau. Leslie O'Neill says hello to the former prime minister. Jets fans embarrassed? Well, they have reason to be. They were in per, almost in first place a couple of weeks ago. Humphreys, this is the big play Chargers, Tom. Tony Martin wide open beats Aaron Glenn. Touchdown, 14-6, lightning bolts. Fourth quarter, eight-point lead continues for the Chargers. And again, run means and big plays. We talked about it this morning. Humphreys, Martin, 60 yards between defenders, 21-6 San Diego. Bobby Ross and the Chargers have won their second AFC West crown in three years. Take a dunk, Bobby. For the Jets, a different sound. Nobody said the Jets fans did not have a sense of humor. I know. I used to be there for 20 years. Chargers 21 and the Jets 6. A very happy plane flight home for the San Diego Chargers who took our cue for going into New England for a 1 o'clock game less than 24 hours before. They flew a day early. I think they will continue that if they go east for the playoffs. Good to see them get in. Well, you talked this morning about them going back to the game plan that was so effective the first six games of the season. That is, Natron means a strong running game up the middle in between the tackles, and then Stan Humphreys throwing the ball deep. You saw them do that all day today. They got back to the style that made them successful early in the season. You know, let's go to the New England Buffalo game, Tommy, because you knew we are going to get here eventually. <laughs> New England has matured before our very eyes early in the year. Looked like they had too many holes, too light. Bledsoe, he was great, but 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 could he? It's all come together. Certainly it did this afternoon. Yeah, I think they've matured as a football team. And certainly Bill Parcells brought them along fundamentally uh, in, in everything that they had to do offensively and defensively. But when I talked with Parcells, he said big games like this come down to turnovers. Today, the Bills, five turnovers, and Drew Bledsoe, none. Parcells himself at the end of the game said this was our best game of the season. And boy, he is Mr. December. Well, Tommy, frankly, the Bills ran into a team today that was younger and stronger. It took four and 15 16th seasons for Buffalo to run out of gas. And when they did it, it was not a pretty sight. After all the games they played from 1990 on, really, if you think about it, from 1988 on, it's to their credit that it took this long. Their image to those who don't understand them will be 0 4 in the Super Bowl. But the true legacy of the Buffalo Bills will be their second half two weeks ago in the Miami night and their second half two years ago in the playoffs against Houston. That's where they will forever hang their hat. They are a throwback, old fashioned team that refused to take no for an answer. They didn't go down until they fired every one of their bullets. Maybe today was a blessing in disguise. They really don't need another run at the Super Bowl right now. What they need is a rest. As we go inside the numbers, the New England Patriots, their secondary after getting torched early this year, it's one of the highest paid secondaries in football and they're playing like it. Last 12 games, they have a lot less touchdown passes than they did in the first three. Interceptions, look at that and under 200 yards a game, as we mentioned, after getting torched the first three games of the year. You want one of the reasons for New England turnaround and growth? There's reason number one. Later in prime time, the Chiefs, could they get back on a playoff roll? We'll be back with more right after this. It's case half full after the comeback they've made for the Eagles, Rob. Pretty empty after five straight losses. Yeah, these two teams, both at 500, but they both got there, as you said, in different ways. After losing seven straight, the G-Men have strung together four consecutive wins, while the Eagles had dropped their last five, which led to the benching 
of Randall Cunningham. Since 91, the Eagles are 23 and 13 when Randall starts, 14 and 14 when someone else does. That someone else, Bubby Brister today. Eagle defense uh, set the tone early in the first. Rodney happened on the carry, but Mike Flores drops him for a seven yard loss. What happened on this, TJ? Well, you see Flores is trying to be blocked by Aaron Pierce. He actually takes Aaron Pierce and throws him into the, into the ball carrier. Then Eagles get it going on D again. Dave Kirk Brown is pressured. He tries to go over the middle, but is intercepted by Mike Zordich, who returns to the Giants' 40-yard line. Then Bubby gets it going. Hits Mark Bavaro. A 27-yard touchdown strike. He dives in for the score. Eagles leading 7-0. Their first first-quarter touchdown in nine games. In the second quarter, some bad news for the Eagles. Charlie Garner ruptures his kneecap on this play, and he would leave the game in obvious pain. He takes with him the Eagles' rushing game, only eight first-half yards on the ground for the Eagles. 10-0 Eagles in the second, Giants driving, and TJ. Look at that little nugget run and fumble. <laughs> Eric Allen picks it up and goes every which way he can. A 30-yard return for Allen after all this. Eagles up 10-3 at the half but find he, before he finally goes down. The Giants offense gets on track in the fourth, 13-6. Dave Brown hits Rodney Hampton, the swing pass for 14 yards. Then truly, Dave Meggett, five yards for the touchdown. The game is tied at 13 all. On the ensuing kickoff, Jeff Seidner fumbles the ball. The Giants recover. What happened here, TJ? Well, you're gonna see Seidner run into his own man right there, has the ball in his left hand. Ball right on his own man pops out. Giants ball third and 15. Brown hits Meggett. And he goes 32 yards to set up the field goal. And the Giants on top 16-13. The Eagles though with a last chance. Bubby Brister is picked off by Barnett. Eagles out of timeouts. Buster there, excuse me, Bubby Brister completes it. Giants think it over. Bubby Brister tries to get out of bounds. The Giants pick it up with time running out. The Giants, they think the game is over. But that's not the case. So Bubby Brister with one more play. Everyone is confused here. The officials let Brister spike the ball with two seconds left. Everyone's confused. Brister wants to know, and the ref says the spike possibly allowed the Giants to pick up the ball and allow the clock to keep going. Finally, Eddie Murray is allowed to try a 45-yard field goal. Just barely wide left. The Giants win a crazy one, and the Eagles are eliminated. No, no one can believe what happened. 16-13, the Eagles are eliminated. Brister, 25 of 39, 182 yards. Dave Brown, 18 of 27. Hampton, 24 rushes, 61 yards. How about the Bengals and the Cards? Buddy's boys still alive in the playoffs. And for a little inspiration, Sir Charles on the sideline. Cardinals stalled on their first possession on the punt. The ball goes off of Roger Jones' foot. Loose ball recovered by Brian Reeves. It's Arizona's ball. That set up Garrison Hurst from the one. He gets in, cards up early, seven to nothing. The Cardinals' next possession, first again, but this time passing to Larry Sinners in the end zone. Cards up 14 nothing in the first. Jeff Blake had his work cut out for him. The Bengals' second possession. Blake goes back, bobbles a snap. It's recovered by Keith McCants. Dave Shula thought he would be in for a long afternoon. Cardinals good field position early in the second. Jeff Schrader to Ricky Prohl. He fumbles at the one. He recovers his own field, his own fumble. It's 21 nothing cards at this point. The Bengals offense just couldn't get started late in the half. Blake looking for Carl Pickens. Right through his hands. Four drop passes by the Bengals in the half. Same series, third and oh a bunch. Blake under pressure. Sacked by Seth Joyner. Cards three sacks in the half, TJ. Yeah, you watch Seth Joyner here. To the left of your screen, he's just basically shadowing Jeff Blake. He waits for him to come outside the pocket, rushes in and cleans up on the sack. See there, Bengals just 33 yards. Total offense in the first half. Second half, Bengals got it moving. On the reverse, Darnay Scott. 
a big gain of 25 yards. Then the next play, Blake to Carl Pickens. Breaks past Aeneas Williams down to the three, a gain of 30 yards. Then on the next play, Jeff Blake going in the end zone. It's tipped and picked off by Seth Joyner. Blake taking a little frustration out on Garth Jacks. Schrader stayed in the sidelines with a sore knee. Steve Berline came in in the fourth. Berline gives it to Larry Sinners. He knows what to do. And the Cardinals go on to win by a final of 28 to 7. Schrader, 12 of 20, 122 yards, one touchdown, no INTs. Steve Berline, 8 of 13, cleaning up 98 yards. Boomer? In the ultimate irony, the Cardinals will try and get in the playoffs next week against the last run and shoot team in football at Atlanta. Good Very point. interesting. Joe Montana back for the Kansas City Chiefs. Remember, he ended the Oilers as we know them last year in the playoffs. If Joe didn't deliver today, the Chiefs, as we know them, would be finished. His defense helped him out early. Dale Carter going to the Pro Bowl, puts his helmet on the football, forcing a fumble by Low White and the Seven Dwarfs. David Whitmore recovers for Kansas City. That sets up Montana to tie to Derek Walker. Touchdown, 7-0, Kansas City at home. Watch the play action, Tom. Yeah, Montana with the great play action fake. The linebackers need to help the DBs in this position, and you can see they fight on the play action fake, the touchdown to Walker. Billy Bob Joe Tolliver struggled today. <laughs> he has uh, Neil Smith playing with the injured thumb, playing hurt all year. Neil knocks down the pass, then Tolliver. Four of nine in the first half for Billy Joe. Third quarter, the Chiefs only leading seven to three. Joe struggled at times, but when it came to pay dirt, he was perfect. Jack B. Kimball, Jack B. Quick. Kimball Anders with a 20 yard pickup. Then, Montana to his favorite receiver, J.J. Burton. Player more than injured, back across the middle for 30 yards. Then Montana to felon Golden, Golden Domer, Lake Dawson, who somersaults in 14-3 Chiefs. What a great job of concentration by Lake Dawson. He pulls this crowd, actually, a ball out of the crowd of five people, rolls into the end zone before he's touched. Next possession, we mentioned on game day, first time in a long time, Montana has a favorite two receivers, Burden and Willie Davis, available to him. Willie pulls down the rainbow for 33 yards. Montana moving past Johnny Yu, fourth out of the all-time passing list. Of course, he just passed 40,000 yards in his last start. Then Donnell Bennett, second effort, gets in for a 12-yard touchdown, 21 to three Chiefs. Scored 24 to nine in the fourth quarter, Neil Smith. Knocks the ball loose from Tolliver. It's ruled a Femba. Look at Neil hustle after the ball. And Jeff Fisher, if I just win one or two games, I, I can stick around, but it hasn't worked. Chiefs, they are opportunistic, always under Marty. Lead the NFL in fumble recoveries. That sets up another rookie you saw Lake Dawson. Here's Greg Hill into the end zone, 31-9. Chiefs dance, Joe Montana. And the Chiefs know if they beat the Raiders next week, no matter what the Raiders do on Sunday night football, the Chiefs will be in. And the Chiefs have owned the Raiders' numbers recently. Joe against the hot Raider team. That's the way it looks. Montana today, 235 yards. When we come back. Plenty more. The big game of the year in the AFC. Pittsburgh. Cleveland. Three Rivers. Who would come out on top? And the Haas trying to lead the Raiders against the Seahawks tonight. And the Raiders keep their drive to the playoffs going. Haas growing the beard. We'll see him play football at the top of the hour. Welcome back to NFL Primetime. Cleveland at Pittsburgh. Not only the battle for rust belt supremacy, but also the battle for first in the AFC Central, not to mention the battle for best record in the conference. Points would be at a premium in this slugfest at dusk at the confluence. It's our word of the week. Playoff fever for the Steelers. The terrible towels are out. Car par! The Steelers have been 20 and 4 against the Browns at the confluence. Neil O'Donnell at home has been stellar. Steelers opening drive, third and two. O'Donnell to Barry Bananas Foster. Dies for the first down despite the big hit by Pepper Johnson. Then utterly clad Bill Belichick, hoping his Cleveland defense could come through. But with the Steelers punting a costly offside penalty on a special team ace, Benny Thompson. So Belichick can't believe it. And as a result, next play, wouldn't you know it, O'Donnell 
Yancey think pen between defenders. The penalty kills him. 7-0 Pittsburgh. Again, great concentration by Yancey think pen in the middle of double coverage and then walking on into the end zone. Steelers next possession with the 7-0 lead. Third and nine. O'Donnell incomplete to one of the Mills brothers, Ernie. But wait, Don Griffin, you cheated. Pass interference. First down, Steelers. Then O'Donnell to his big, and I do mean big, tight end. Eric Green down to the three. Two plays later, just desserts for Barry Bananas Foster. Over the top, very quickly, 14-0 Pittsburgh with that lead, with that defense. Still in the first quarter, Vinny Testaverde. Here comes one of those blitzes. Third down, whack, incomplete. Browns only 14 yards in the first quarter. The Steelers, 155. Steelers came out smoking, but you know the way the Patriots turned around that game. Could Cleveland come back? The veteran Ernest Beiner trying to pick up the slack. 15 yards out of the 16-yard line. But Testaverde goes back to pass, and it's Mr. Jones. The counting crows on an interception. Gary Jones' first interception of the year. A big play at the goal line. Yeah, Testaverde, a good job. You're going to see what he sees right here. Open receiver doesn't come back quite far enough for the football. Jones makes the nice eye and Along INT. came Gary Jones. Steve Crosby trying to get Vinny to do some stills and Nash. Testaverde to Derek Alexander, the youngster, who can make some big plays. And look at what he does just before the half. Then Testaverde to one of his receivers back from his Tampa Bay days, Mark Carrier. Hey, we're in it, say the Browns. 14-7. Greg Lloyd says, I can't believe we gave up a touchdown late at the half or something like that. Third quarter, Steelers defense best in football. Browns first possession, second half. Leroy Hort. He does this. He fumbles. Joel Steed strips it. Ray Seals recovers for Pittsburgh. In an effort to get extra yardage, you see Leroy Hort here gets caught in traffic, and Steed does a great job of sticking that big paw out, getting the ball. Very opportunistic defense by the Steelers. Well, they need Young along with the Stills and Nash for Steve Crosby. Testaverde back to pitch. Chad Brown. Picks it off the linebacker, leads to a field goal, 17 to seven, Pittsburgh. Minutes ago in the game, Testaverde, fake spiking the ball on Marino. It's a touchdown to <laughs> Michael Jackson, but offside because so it's only a <laughs> no touchdown. The Steelers have won. That's right, Kevin. The Steelers are champs of the AFC Central for the second time in three years. And for the second time in three years, they've clinched home field advantage to the playoffs. The first time they had it, Buffalo knocked them right out. Chances are they mean more business this time. Steelers 17, the Browns 7. The Miami Dolphins had already clinched a playoff berth Monday night. They were good looking to win the East if Don Shula could to hit a three-wood through the RCA dome from his golf cart. But the Colts had other ideas. O.J. McDuffie, though, first down catch from Dan Marino. 15 times he's touched the ball on third down this year. They made 15 first down conversions. <laughs> I'd say the man is money. But third down at the 16, Marino's pass is defended by Ashley Ambrose. Breaking up the pass, looking for Irving Fryer. So, again, another first quarter. No touchdowns, only 3 nothing Miami. Dewell Brewer finds it at the 25, breaks a couple of tackles. And look at him go! He could go all the way! Punt return, 75 yards. Colts lead 7-3. to three. Ted Marchabrota's team lost in the final seconds earlier this year. Miami, they know they match up well. Second quarter late. Marino off the fingertips, though, to Fryer. Could have been a touchdown, but Miami first down, 13 seconds to go in the half. Fryer down to the two. No timeouts left. Tick, 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 tick. Get it. Let me spike it. Tick, 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 tick. There's the gun. The half is over. Seven to three. Oh my goodness, there's a win coming up. I gotta go up a club. Tommy, Miami moves to the Colts three-yard line. They try to pound it in. Irving Spikes goes outside. There's nothing. Then James Saxon on, on, on third down is stuffed up the middle. And they settle for a field goal, so it's seven to six Colts. Jim Harbaugh starting for the Colts. Pass over the middle to Sean Dawkins. Harbaugh. Didn't complete many, but at times, Tommy, he was tough. Mike Marino, he rolls left, scrambles left, and what? I don't like the idea that you cut the field down so much when you roll out down in the red zone. Tom Olivadotti's defense holding to a field goal. It's 10 to 6. Marino ready for a comeback. He did it. Down by nine in the fourth quarter of the Colts before. Oh, Nelly hits Keith Jackson. He goes down to the 12. Chula up. Get the cart out of here. Third and goal from the two. 
Marino's pass to Mark Ingram, but it's that man, Ashley Ambrose, again. Fourth down, we got to go. It's 10-6. Two and a half to go. Ingram. But it's Ambrose playing defense again. Tony Bennett also got a finger on it. So Shula could not clinch the division. And the Miami Dolphins now will try and go for the division title Sunday night, Christmas night, on ESPN at 8, on the same night against Detroit, that they might go for a division title. And Barry Sanders tries to go for 2,000 yards. Tommy, let's go to the Pittsburgh-Cleveland game. Vinny threw 42 passes today, and that's not what Bill Belichick had in mind. Well, I think when you look at the game plan for both of these teams, it's pretty much the same. They want to run the football. They want to play good run defense, force some situations as far as a down and distance, and not put a lot of pressure on the quarterback to have to get things done. All of that game plan went out of the window for the Browns when they fell behind 14 nothing. And at the time that Vinny Testaverde starts throwing and trying to play catch-up football, you're going to get the interceptions, and he also did not get help from that backfield because they laid the ball on the ground. Well, people have forgotten. Cleveland, of course, got in last week, too, but now they will go in as the wild card looking for that top seed, which means they would play at least one home game to start if they're the top wild card seed. As we go inside the numbers, it's a time of the year when, you know, big running and passing games are tough. Only 100-yard rusher during the afternoon, Barry Bananas Foster, playing hurt, and he earned his money today. Only one 300-yard passer today, Tommy, Brett Favre. Two touchdown passes, ran for one, pack in the hunt. Pretty short lists. We return our game balls. Talked about the high price secondary, the Patriots. They are paying big time dividends. Stay with us. In the holiday spirit, as we go inside the numbers, there were some 100 yard receivers today. Lawrence Dossie of the Buccaneers leads the charge. Tony Martin caught only three, but two of them were bombs. Andre Reid, valiant in defeat for the Buffalo Bills. More 100-yard receivers. Gary Clark, way up on the all-time receiving list. Edgar Bennett had a big day catching and running the football for the pack. And Lake Dawson, 101, a silly millimeter longer for the Kansas City Chiefs. Game balls, Hayes playing hurt, but they need the big-time players to come through, and that's what the Chargers got today. Junior Seau, nine tackles, two assists, one fumble recovery, hustling, playing like a little kid, all over the field, forcing the turnovers, making the turnovers. Junior Seau and the Chargers having a nice flight west. Winners of the AFC West for the second time in three years. That's my game ball, Rob. Well, Boomer, a rare offensive show by the Cards today. Garrison Hurst ran one in, and he can also throw also, completing this 10-yard pass to Larry Sinners for the touchdown. 28 points for Buddy's offense today as we take a look at Hurst's numbers. Buddy's boy is still alive, TJ. Yeah, my game ball is going to go to one of the new kids on the block in the AFC East, Ricky Reynolds. Here you see the fumble being caused. Ricky Reynolds gets the nice pickup, runs the ball in, 25 yards for a touchdown. Mike Pitts caused the fumble. You look at the two fumble recoveries he had, one TD, seven tackles, and we'll be back. Happened today. It's not the full playoff picture, but today, Pittsburgh and San Diego won division titles in the AFC. The East is still up for grabs. The Patriots are tied now with Miami for first place. Atlanta and the Jets and Buffalo and Philadelphia and Denver yesterday were eliminated. And Tom, big win for the Steelers. Well, I, I played football, the playoffs in Three Rivers Stadium. It is a difficult place to play, and they took a giant step today toward playing on January 29th. Well, I mean, it's a long way off, but let's just get it out there now. If it's Pittsburgh against either San Francisco or Dallas in the Super Bowl, long way off from now, who will get the first, fifth Super Bowl <laughs> ring? Robin Roberts and Tom Jackson. I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching Primetime. We have primetime football, though, here. Sunday night football at the Kingdom as the Seattle Seahawks host the L.A. Raiders. Mike Patrick, Joe Theismann, Mark Malone on the call. Michael? All right, thank you, Chris. And we are at the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington. We'll have a crowd of nearly 60,000 for an AFC West battle between the L.A. Raiders and the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday night, NFL. The saga of the silver and black has been one of struggle, disappointment, dispute, and resolve. Now with two weeks left in what has been a tumultuous season, the Raiders may add the ultimate triumph.
L.A. has rebounded from the horrible start to win six of their last eight games and in the process have unleashed the powers that be. The Raiders now have the playoffs clearly in sight, yet unfinished business remains. Tonight, an early season loss must be atoned for. It's silver and black payback time on Sunday night, NFL.